How's it going everyone? Mitch here with another Logic Pro 9 tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be talking about flex time, how to do it very easy, very simply, and how to do it so that it sounds as natural as possible. All right. So that's what we're going to be going over in this tutorial. And as you can see in front of Logic here that I have an audio track already in here. And um, I don't have any audio. So let's record some audio. <laughs> I am not a whore. All right. So we have me saying I am not a whore. Let me clip these ends where I hit my space bar. Okay. Fun stuff. But turns out I didn't come in at the right time. I meant to come in right here at the third. Um, this is the third measure, so that's where I wanted to come in. Let's listen to it really quick. I am not a whore. All right, so that's what we're going to be going with. So uh, basically, everything that I have here is going to be in time, except for that first part of my audio file. So I can't just move the audio file over. I have to use a little bit of a different kind of approach and that approach is going to be flex or flex time okay so what we can do is come up here and select our flex time uh, view right to the right of our automation view and that's all fun but uh, all it comes up with is this little bar that says off um, on our track and if you select that it comes up with all these different things you can do and all these things that you can do are going to be different algorithms to stretching and compressing the audio um, how it looks for transients things like this go in mess with these find out which one you like but I find that polyphonic is my favorite it works the best and it darkens and it has little little white strips of lines through our audio file okay those white lines are going to be the transients that this polyphonic algorithm found for us okay and now as you can see as you move your pointer around things change there's arrows on the top there's no arrows on the top there's three bars there's one bar turns out if you are looking split this audio file halfway horizontally okay so everything down here is going to have three bars everything above is going to have one if you are on top of a transient that this program picked up there's going to be an arrow on the top okay if you're not on it there's not going to be an arrow obviously okay so what happens is if there's only one bar it will select if there's an arrow on it only that one transient if there's no arrow it will select a random transient that you pick for yourself okay let's go back if you if there's an if there's three bars with three arrows on top, it's going to select that transient that you are pointing at right now, and then the two transients on the side, as you can see right there. Okay. If there's no bars and no or three bars and no arrows on the top, it's going to pick where that transient wherever your pointer is at that time, and then the two specified transients by this polyphonic algorithm that uh, for both sides um, of that. All right. So that's a little bit about what all these symbols mean as you move your pointer around this audio file. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be selecting uh, this first one. This is going to be my variable, okay? And then I'm going to be setting two anchors. And those two anchors I'm going to be setting, let's say, right here and right out here in the middle of nowhere. And then what happens is as you go across that variable that I set, um, it turns out it's that one line, but it has this, these two squiggly arrows pointing inside of it. And as you click it right there, in between the two anchors, left and right, it turns gray or lighter gray. Okay, and then the variable um, turns yellow. Okay, and so as you move it left and right, you can see that the audio file stretches and compresses, and the orange is going to be a stretch the green is going to be a compression alright and what I wanted was it to be landing right on my third beat or that first beat of the measure and then you can see that I decided the rest was perfectly fine and I am running on no power problem solved see how I did that 
Nice. Okay, so what happened is I left the rest of my audio file how it was because that's I liked it like that. But the beginning was off and I changed that with setting it to left and right anchors and moving this middle variable transient around wherever I wanted to. All right, so let's take a listen and see what it sounds like. Let's turn on the click just to see how in time it is. I am not a whore. All right, and there was a little bit of modulation inside of that just because for this right now, I am I exaggerated uh, what was happening here. I went really, really late and I compressed or I stretched out this part of the audio file a lot, okay? Um, if there is parts in your audio file that you really need to compress or shorten a lot, like in this case, I would suggest redoing the whole audio over. Hopefully that musician or whoever did it is still in your studio and you can easily do that. But if not, you are in a little bit of trouble and you're going to have to work around it with this flex and sometimes modulation happens and that's not good. But it's it 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 happens with flex. Any algorithm that you use, it's going to happen, okay? Um, so be very careful with how much you compress and stretch these audio files. But as you can see, it was on time just like I wanted it and everything turned out peachy, okay? A little thing to note here really quickly is if you create another track and you try moving this or copying it down to that other track down below, boom, what happened? It went back to normal. Why is it like that? Well, it's like that because if we enter our flex view, the flex for that track is turned off. And even if you go down to polyphonic, it goes right back to exactly how you did it above in the top one. The polyphonic or the information, the flex information is built into the track. All you have to say is that this track needs to be enabled for flex by uh, opening up your flex view and selecting whatever algorithm you chose. Okay, So be careful about that when copying down to another track. All right. So that's really all I had to show you today, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, hopefully you got something out of it. Hopefully. <laughs> but uh, I've been really wanting to talk about this for a long, long time. But hey, something to note really quick. I am actually going to be starting up another channel here pretty soon in the near future. It's going to be about computer science, um, some programming, different languages. Um, it's going to be also about computer engineering, maybe some computer organization, some things like that. And then also maybe some circuits because I'm an also an electrical engineering major as well. So I am actually studying, that's what I'm studying in school right now, so I feel like I even have a better um, understanding of those topics more than I do about mixing, producing, things like of that nature um, because I'm not going to school for it. So uh, if you are interested in those topics, make sure once I get that channel up to hit that subscribe button. Um, I should be making some pretty damn interesting tutorials. They should be pretty sweet. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's all I really had to talk about. Peace out.